Rent in Hong Kong is famously expensive, so even when my baby was on the way, my husband and I knew we would have to work, and my job didn't have flexible working hours either. So, like many of my friends, we realized we had no choice but to hire a helper. A lot of my friends had hired helpers when they first had kids, but for me it was such a personal decision. After all, this woman was going to come into my home and spend more time with my children than I would. My husband stayed out of it and said he supported whatever decision I made. It was so hard for me to decide who to hire. I figured it would be strange having another woman in the house, but I left it up to my wife. I had a lot of work going on right after the baby was born, and to be honest, I didn't have the energy to be that involved in the process. I trusted my wife's judgment and just went with what she said. Everyone we know in the building has a helper. It's just the way things are here. As an early child, I can see that my parents were struggling to cope on their own, so I knew I'd have to find someone who could make things easier for them around the house. It's pretty common knowledge that the Indonesians speak good Cantonese, so that's why I asked for them specifically. I tried to find information online or in books, but there's really not much helpful resources out there. In the end, I used an agency recommended by some of our friends in the same housing complex. They were friendly and explained the process to us, assuring that they went through checks and used fair recruitment practices and employment guidelines. Remember, ask the agency for certification. Although there are hundreds of employment agencies to choose from, there are specific checks and qualifications that you can request to see to ensure they meet certain legal criteria. Also, depending on the nationality of your helper, you can contact the relevant consulate to see if they've been blacklisted or associated with malpractice in the past. We selected our helper on the basis of her level of experience, her knowledge of English, which was important for us so that she speaks it with our child, and her personality. After choosing her, we did a video call and she asked us some questions about the working conditions in our apartment. Remember, communication should always be two-way. You have entered into a contractual relationship and need to respect it. Your promises and decisions have significant repercussions on your helper's quality of life. This dynamic is bound by the legal contract you've signed. Think about how you would want to be treated. Can you imagine doing a job under different pretenses to what you had agreed? Avoid future problems by being honest and upfront with your helper from the beginning. When we first welcomed her into our home, it felt strange, especially since our apartment is so small but we soon got used to having her around and she quickly became part of the family. Sometimes, I admit, because we're so used to having her around, we might ask her to do something after she's been working for 13 hours, just because it needs doing. Remember, a helper is not a family member. Despite how close she might seem to you and your children, she is a worker doing a job under contract and as a result, should only be asked to work during the agreed legal working hours. You might need to attend to your sick child around the clock during the night, but that doesn't mean that your worker should. You know how tiring it can be to look after your child around the clock. Imagine if that was your reality six days a week. It was strange at first for me to hand over my precious baby, who seemed so helpless, to a complete stranger. And I'll admit, I did find myself getting jealous about the bond she has with my kids. She was there to see their first steps, hear their first words, but I came to realize that wasn't anything to do with her personally. She was just doing a job. And that to her it was just a job, even though to me it was something very emotional. My kids are older now and understand the difference between their mum and their yeje, but it wasn't always like that. And in fact, while she was working for me, she was missing out on part of her own children's childhoods too. Remember, it's normal for a parent to need some time to get accustomed to the new dynamic of having another woman in the house, especially one who might be seen to be taking over some of the parental duties. But remember, this situation is most likely just as strange to them as it is to you, and they are there to work to raise money for their own families. There were definitely some things to get used to in the first year, like when our helper talks on the phone, she's so loud, or when she's watching videos on YouTube, the kids want to do it too, and we're trying to limit their screen time. So we tried to tell her not to use the phone at night, as it would disturb the children. The same for her food. When we were trying to get our youngest used to eating boiled vegetables, we couldn't eat with our helper, as her local food was fried and full of sugar, and of course, when our daughter saw it, that's what she wanted to eat. Remember. It's natural to need some time to get accustomed to welcoming a stranger into your home, but this journey is hard for your helper too. Aside from the change of environment, there are no doubt finding it challenging to maintain contact with their relatives and loved ones back home, which they rely on their phones for. Also remember, many of these problems can stem from your worker not having their own private space, the suitable accommodation with reasonable privacy that you agreed to in the contract. This means that they must have their own room to sleep and can only share a room with children younger than 12 or children older than 12 of the same gender. Yes, there were times when I was tired after a long day at work, when I came home and things weren't done the way I had asked and I got angry with my helper. Or my parents had explained the way they like to have their apartment cleaned three times and she still couldn't get it right. She also takes her eye off the ball occasionally. There are likely to be several occasions when you and your helper might not see eye to eye. 
The key is communication and ensuring that you give her the opportunity to voice her opinion in the same way you do yours. Remember the contract you sign that requires helpers to have 24 consecutive hours off each week, as well as all statutory holidays and paid annual leave. We know that helpers take out loans in order to pay for the training and costs associated with traveling to Hong Kong. So we told her, if you borrow money, then at least borrow it from us. We didn't want her to go to a loan shark. Remember, suggest that your helper informs themselves about their financial options through NGOs such as Enrich, who offer courses and resources specifically aimed at workers. It is not advised that you offer loans as their employer, since it puts them in an additional position of vulnerability to you and could further complicate the employer-worker relationship that you have worked so hard to establish. And even if you do offer a loan, remember that it is not legal to ask for their passport as collateral. Only they can hold on to their passport. I thought about my own work experience and how, when I worked in different jobs, which ones I liked the most. I try to do the same for my helper. If she's in a pleasant environment, she'll be happy and deliver her best. I'll admit that we do sometimes ask her to make breakfast on Sundays, which we know is her day off, or to come back by dinner so we can have some help preparing for the week ahead. Though I do my best to make sure she's compensated for that extra time, like paying her overtime. I used to say that because I was regularly asked to work outside of normal hours, that it's just part of the culture, but now I see things from her perspective. Remember, regardless of the extenuating circumstances, you must respect your helper's right to time off, 24 consecutive rest hours each week, which should be uninterrupted by work obligations. If you ask them to work during their rest day, or on statutory holidays, or during their paid annual leave, then they are entitled to overtime pay for that work. We recognize that it's hard to be an employer in your own home. You're not alone, and there are resources out there for you to inform yourself with.